What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another Euro 2020 fancy video. In this one we are talking about five differentials to have a look at if you're still playing around with your team before match day one, had a bit of time today to do an extra video, um, obviously before the deadline, and we'll still do a deadline stream later, probably starting at seven o'clock. That's not completely locked in, but that's now what I'm thinking about. So in this one, we're going to go through five differentials. If you want to give it a like, please do hit that subscribe button if you're new, and let's jump into it. By the way, I did put up a tweet this morning saying, what kind of video would you want to see? I think it was FPL Swee that came up with... Uh, differentials if you're not already following them make sure you do on twitter loads of threads and stuff on the euro 2020 game and let's jump into it now i have gone for differentials that i think are genuinely okay options good options in some cases i think you know i don't like going for differentials for the sake of it you know that right you know that but morata 9 million quite expensive right only a million more to get the uh obviously a bit more to get lukaku ronaldo kane etc but i think I think Morata gets a bit of a bad rap, right? I think he's a genuinely good striker who's returned a lot of goals and assists over his career. And some of this is going to stem from his time at Chelsea, right? That didn't go as well as was hoped, I'm sure. But I had a look over his entire career. This is at club level. He's returned a goal or an assist at a rate of 0.81 per 90, right? Which isn't bad. That's way more than a return every other game for him. And then for Spain, that's actually a little bit better. 39 games for Spain, he's returned at a rate of 0.91. So in terms of a price point for this game, I'm sure some people are looking at like Torres in defence, maybe Torres in midfield as well, possibly the Spanish goalkeeper, etc. Is there room to fit Morata in? Possibly not. But if you're looking to go for a little bit of a cheaper forward line to then put money elsewhere bearing in mind if you're thinking about captaincies as well Morata plays on the la uh, the second to last day on match day one so obviously you've got the Germany France game and then Portugal Hungary the last day but he still plays towards the end so he's like a last ditch sub on captaincy and stuff like that I think Spain's group is fairly easy I'm not saying like it's going to be super easy for them to get out but they are heavy favorites for every single game Sweden Poland and Slovakia and as always depends on what your strategy is like if you're definitely using a chip in match day two like a limitless chip then sweden and slovakia is pretty good fixtures to target so the only concern for me really is the covid situation in spain we haven't really heard too much more it sounds like they're still doing kind of individual training they'll join back up as a group before the tournament starts and they should be able to play right as long as they all test negative so I, I don't know. I wouldn't say he's necessarily a better option than Lukaku and Co., the ones that are in most people's teams. But if you want to come down a little bit in price to upgrade elsewhere, a rate of 0.91 returns per 90 minutes. He got a lot of chances against Portugal in the friendly recently as well. Yes, okay, it's frustrating that he didn't put him in the back of the net, right? I get that. But he's still got a pretty decent return rate, and he should start. Obviously, some competition from Moreno. Uh, but all the predicted lineups I'm seeing have got him starting. Four goals, one assist in his last 10 matches. Of Only eight of those were starts. So not a bad return. Sweden, Slovakia, I like him. I've got to say, the Portugal team is looking proper decent. And obviously, what they don't have that Germany and France have is a poor fixture in match day one. They have a good one against Hungary. And I almost put Guerrero in, who's the left back uh, for Portugal. Very attacking, right, at club level. If a national level, he is also quite attacking. But I looked at the kind of returns, assists and goals between him and Cancelo for country. And Cancelo is kind of right up there. So although Guerrero is the differential, he also costs more than Cancelo. Cancelo looks fairly nailed, so I didn't put him on the list. But I did put Bernardo Silva, right? Now, he's not as much of a flair pick as like Jota at the same price, who's also 8.5 million, Ronaldo, etc. But what he will give you is guaranteed starts, I think. At least I think, right? I'm, I'm thinking there's a guarantee there at least. And probably a few more minutes than Jota as well. I feel like I've, I've spoken to a lot of people about this, that Jota is almost like a sub waiting to happen. It'd be interesting to see how they line up in the first game. But I think with Bernardo Silva, you've got a bit of a differential. He's 2% owned. I should have said, by the way, Morata is 3% own but yeah Bernardo Silva 2% looking at his returns um, one thing to say for Portugal is he does play more of an advanced role than you maybe have seen for Man City this season now a couple of seasons before that for Man City he would have been playing more like a right winger but in the recent season he's played a lot deeper and sometimes even in like a like a CM role like a free eight role whatever you want to call it um, where he does get forward but he does have that deep role he does have the defensive work to do as well obviously he's not a Rodri or Fernandinho um, but he does that job for Pep Guardiola doesn't have that much 
He has a bit more flexibility, I would say, in the Portugal team. Um, I had a look at the recent returns. So they've not been fantastic for him, but in recent times, they've played France twice, they've played Spain twice. Um, so the fixtures have been quite difficult in between, obviously, the easier ones. And then you go all the way back to qualifying, which obviously was a little while ago, but that's when he was getting decent minutes against some decent opposition as well. And he got nine returns in six matches. So has he completely fallen off? I'm not sure that he has. One goal, two assists in the last seven starts. Obviously, that's those seven starts are covering... Um, oh, sorry, he's played 10 matches, uh, and I looked at those last 10, and seven of them were starts. So only three returns isn't great. But I look back at qualifying, and he did really well there. Is someone like Jota going to take the mantle and Bruno Fernandes, etc.? Are they going to chip in with goals and assists to the point where Bernardo Silva is not an option? Possibly, but he's only 2% owned. If you need someone for match day one, differential, I think he's a good option alongside someone like Jota for Hungary. So again, a lot of people going with um, expensive front lines, Ronaldo, Lukaku, Kane, Lewandowski, uh, Ronaldo, etc. So I've gone for someone who's a little bit cheaper, only 1% owned, which is Kleizic. Um Now 7.5 million playing for Austria. Now, either side of Netherlands, they got pretty good fixtures. North Macedonia and Ukraine. I know people keep telling me North Macedonia are going to do really well. Ukraine are going to do really well. I'm not saying they're going to walk all over them. I just said they're fairly good um, fixtures either side of a Netherlands game. So it depends, again, what um, kind of strategy you're playing. He's he's only 23. He scored 16 goals and, five, and got five assists as well for Stuttgart this season in the Bundesliga. His national career is still fairly young, right? He hasn't played a huge amount of games, but in his last five starts, he scored three goals. The biggest problem with this one, and this is probably my most wary punt of the whole differentials, like Bernardo Silva, Morata, they should all start. When we talk about players in a minute, they're likely to start as well. Um, and if they don't, there's a get-out plan anyway. But with Klaizic, the problem is... We don't know whether he and Arnautovic are both going to line up. I've tried to have a look. I couldn't see what the, the deal is with Arnautovic. He did have an injury. But even if he's in the team, we don't know if they're going to both play together. And if they don't, will he go with the more experienced Arnautovic, who's done pretty well uh, for country? And we know how well he's done at club level as well. Or will he go for the younger Klaizic? I don't know, right? So for me, this is for someone that wants a... Cheaper striker than the same Rata, a cheaper striker than the premium forwards, and wants to take a bit of a punt. Now, obviously, in this game, um, I'm not saying that going for players that aren't nailed on is better, but obviously, you do have a sub strategy in this. So, if it doesn't work for him, or he doesn't start and then he comes on, or he starts and doesn't do too well, you can always sub him off for another player. Uh, but obviously, you don't want to put too many of those players in your team because there are only a limited uh, amount of subs, right? You've only got three outfield players on your bench. So, I don't hate it as a pick. If he starts, I think he could do well. He's got the fixtures. Um, he's got a bit of pedigree behind him from club level. And he's already doing quite well uh, from a national level as well. It's just whether or not he's nailed on. That's the only issue with this pick. So this seems like a bit of an obvious pick now. But Brady, who at the moment you're probably seeing in loads and loads of teams uh, on YouTube, on Twitter, etc., He's only owned by 4% of all UEFA Euro 2020 fantasy managers, right? It just rolls off the tongue. He's 6 million. If you go and look at 6 million or less priced mids or cheaper priced mids, there really aren't too many options, right? Italy's last friendly game looked pretty much full strength to me. And Berardi started ahead of Chiesa, who a lot of us have talked about um, pre-season or pre-tournament, right? Now, again, I know what's going to be in the comments. I know we are going to get the Italy lineup. That's why I like him so much. Because if he starts, you've got a guaranteed starter for 6 million. So you need to keep him on your watch list. Even if you don't want to go for him right now, keep an eye on those team sheets tonight. And it might mean that you've got a bit of extra money to spend. I think in some cases, if you get a guarantee, if you know that he's going to start which it looks like he probably will then for a lot of you that have got like seven million euro midfielders and you don't have an italian midfielder he probably is the one just to go for and just spend that million elsewhere the only i guess downside is if you're not using all your chips in the group stages will chiesa start at some point possibly italy do have pretty good strength and depth especially in this position looking at his stats right so syria uh, last season um 0.5 sorry season before last was 0.53 expected goal involvement per 90 it was 0.5 this season if you go and check out um the likes of foden and mares etc 
It's around comparable. So he's pretty decent, got an eye for goal. He hasn't been in the Italy squad a huge amount. So over qualifying and stuff like that, back a couple of years ago, he wasn't even in the squad. Did have a bit of an injury as well at the time. Um, and I had a look. His five goals have all come in the last six matches. So he's got a bit of goal scoring form for Italy as well. Uh, and given that he is the first, or he plays in the first match of match day one and match day two, um, or the first day, I should say, if he doesn't do well for six minutes, you can just sub him out as well. So I think he's a great pick, right? And I wasn't saying this for the whole of the rest of pre uh, tournament because I thought Chiesa might start, but it looks now like it could be Berardi. For six million, I don't think there's too many better options in better teams with good fixtures as well. Turkey's not going to be a walkover or anything like that, but you do have the ability to sub him out. So again, you don't want to keep thinking like that. Oh, I'll just get this random player because I can always sub him out. But for six million. In a bit of goal scoring form, I love him. 4% owned. Gozens is my defensive pick, right? Listed as a defender, 5 million. He's going to play wing back uh, by the looks of it for Germany. Obviously, they're playing a back three. If you're like me, you've probably not given Germany and France too much thought because they play each other in the first game. Then Germany have to play Portugal in the second game. It's not looking good. But if you're on limitless match day two, hear me out about why you could go for him. Now, some of this... He's obviously a bit of knee-jerk, and from the Latvia game, I think he got a goal and an assist in that one. But I looked at his expected data for um, last season. Uh, obviously, he's listed as defender. 0.38 expecting goal involvement per 90 is super high, right? Now, Latvia is obviously a tougher game than... Uh, sorry, not as tough, I should say, uh, as France and Portugal. But I, I don't know. There's a feeling I have about this France-Germany game where possibly... It could be quite tight. We know how good France are, but not, and I know this is so cliche, but neither of these teams are going to want to lose this opening match. That's huge, right? I know that there's all this third place teams go through, okay? And I think it's four out of six of them go through, so most of them do. But it's all based on most points. So if one of the if two of the teams from this group both win two games, okay, let's say Portugal beat Germany or France and then they beat Hungary and then France beat Germany and Hungary, it would be very tough then for Germany to go through because they don't could only get a maximum of three points. It may not happen like that, but what I'm saying is this opening game could be quite a tight one uh, and then Germany try and take it versus Portugal and Hungary instead, maybe play for the draw here. The thing is, again, he plays on the last day. So you'd only have to bring him in in match day one if you absolutely have to, if all your defenders are blanked or there's a defender that's blanked and you can just bring Gozens on as a last minute punt and hopefully he gets you something, whether that's an assist, possibly a goal, right? Although I guess it's uh, quite unlikely against France or maybe an outside shot, at a clean sheet. It's like a free punt. He's only 0.5 million more than all the defenders. Then if you're limitless in match day two, it doesn't matter. And in match day three, you'd have him back for Hungary. So one thing I would say is Germany in match day three is one of the teams I think a lot of people are going to want to target who they haven't considered in their match day one lineups. Obviously, if you're going to wildcard and limitless in the groups, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't pick him for match day one. But if you're thinking about just using one chip, like the limitless match day two, I don't think he's the worst pick. Now, this is knee-jerking from the Latvia game, right? I hadn't considered him before that. But for five million, thinking last day punt, obviously, if your defenders have all got points or all your players have got points or whatever... Um, I've got enough points anyway that you can just leave him on your bench then you've got him for hungry it's because he's 5 million if he was 5.5 or 6 I wouldn't even be considering him but he's 1% owned very attacking and a German back 3 I like him so there we go that is it for this one the final pre-recorded video pre-tournament i'll have content all the way through the tournament as well uh, a lot of people have been asking me to do videos every time i make a sub that's just not going to happen I don't, it's just that's not worth it here's a video yeah i'm subbing out this player he only got two points you don't need to see a video on that but there will be kind of limitless wildcard strategy my team selection match day previews and all that throughout the tournament so do make sure you subscribe and hit that like button if you're enjoying the videos I will be doing a deadline stream tonight right up unfortunately it's right up until kickoff uh, so actually now i prefer the fpl way but i'm going to be on until about eight o'clock uh, tonight just before the italy game uh, kicks off and i'm going to run downstairs and watch that game that will probably start at seven o'clock it might be a little bit earlier i haven't quite decided but obviously keep an eye out on youtube but there we go i hope your tinkering is going well hit that like button hit that subscribe button good luck for match day one and i'll catch you again soon